Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. I got some amazing news for you and I'm really surprised that the mainstream media hasn't picked this up. Let me tell you first of all the physical side before we do the, spir the spiritual side. Brothers and sisters, we've all had loved ones that passed away. A mother, a father, a brother, a sister, a close family member. But one of the mercies of our deen is that with the right intention we can go ahead and continue to do good deeds on our loved one's behalf. And what greater of a continuous good deed, Sadaqa Jariya, than investing on their behalf in the Deed Center, a Masjid and Nagadawa Center that will benefit generations to come, inshallah. So click the link below, donate right now. May God Almighty Allah reward all of you. Let's meet a former pastor by the name of Um Lazi Durban. <laughs> converted to Islam in a in his own church, get this. He made his dishada in the church. They were supporting what I was saying, they were also saying it. Everybody repeat after me, Ashadu. Now this is a South African priest of 15 years, leader of his congregation from the Corinthian Church of South Africa. So I've been a priest for 15 years now, leader of the congregation, the Corinthian Church of South Africa. It's got about 100,000 followers. Now I want you to imagine this. You're going to Sunday service and you got the priest, your priest, the leader of the congregation, giving you shahada, saying the shahada, the declaration of faith, that there's nothing worthy of worship except the creator of the heavens and earth. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. He's saying this to his congregation. He is actually accepting himself Islam. And now also his congregation is also coming to Islam. Subhanallah. Everybody repeat after me. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. I bear witness. I bear witness. There's none worthy of worship. There's none worthy of worship except Allah. Except Allah. And Muhammad. And Muhammad. He's the final messenger. He's the final messenger. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. I mean, I've, I've been doing this a long time. I've seen monks, priests. I mean, you got left wing, right wing, conservatives, you name it. If someone's sincere and they're seeking to know the purpose of life and they look in Islam, they're going to be doing the same thing. But to see such a large following in his own church. And Three months ago, I made his dishada in the church. They were supporting what I was saying. They were also saying it. Those thousand voices saying one, giving the shahada with me. Ashadu, Ashadu, Allah, Allah, Ilaha, Ilaha, Illallah, Illallah. And later it's said that this church it actually turned into a masjid. This is a prophecy that is being fulfilled. This is a, right in front of your eyes, right in front of our eyes. This is a, truly amazing. And this is just another sign that God Almighty Allah is putting out there for you to see, for the world to see that Islam is definitely the way of life from the creator of the heavens and earth. Now, I'm really surprised that there aren't many other news sources covering this. We've had some Muslims cover this, but we don't have, this would be great for some of the mainstream media to go ahead and cover such amazing stories like this, even local media. I mean, some news, hopefully they'll watch the, the show that we do right now on this, this news update, amazing news update, might I say, and hopefully they'll pick up on this story, and this is, this is something amazing to report on. Ends up getting invited by the Saudi government now to come and do Hajj. Then he explains a little bit of what happened. Then I said, ah, just a trip. He came again. And again, and the last time, this voice became aggressive now. Tell your men. Then I went, it was a congregation. I said, now I'm going to these people, I'm going to tell them. Told them. You know how, we, how Allah made it easy? They just accepted. All of them. Then when the next meeting came on the next congregation, 
everyone was wearing it, white kurtas, and all those they accepted. They accepted. And we know dreams can come in different types. You can have dreams come, inspiration that comes from the Creator, from God Almighty. You can have dreams from the ramblings of your mind. You can also have dreams from the devil. But if, if you have a good dream, and now it leads you to look into Islam, and then you look into Islam, you say, man, this just makes sense. Worship one God, worship the Creator, not the creation, be morally upright, and all the time. Everything just goes with your human nature. It goes, it's the natural way. But then you can also have a, a dream, and that dream now, how do you know it's from the devil? Because it goes opposite to what God Almighty wants you to do. Now you get a dream, and in the dream, it's... Uh, it's calling you to identify as something that God Almighty didn't create you to be, as a lamppost, as an animal, as, as opposite of the body part that you were created with. That's a problem now. Now that goes against, now you can say this is some, This would be a dream of the devil. This would be from the satanic forces. You get the difference, okay? But when you have a dream that's now something in line and then the person goes, it's a sign, and then you go and investigate and you look at Islam and you look at the teachings and you're like, man, this just makes sense. It's the pure monotheism that I'm being invited to. It's the way of Jesus, Moses, Abraham, and all the other messengers. Last and fundamental problem, Muhammad, that's all. It's a, there's a chain that was there from the beginning. It's not different religions. Anyways, you look at it and it just makes sense. It's nothing strange, nothing esoteric, no strange superstitions. It makes good old common sense. And now you share this with your congregation. They accept. Now he ends up getting invited to Hajj. He goes to the Hajj and he's kind of going over this and explaining some of his experience, who he is and what happened and whatnot. I mean, this is just truly mind-blowing. It's amazing. But this is prophesied in, in Islam, in the Quran. This is something that Prophet Muhammad also foretold that this would be happening. Alhamdulillah. We're happy. And I saw Muslim brothers coming. I said, I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting for you. I had a dream that you'll, you'll come here. Peace be, be upon him, Muhammad. When we went up here, he was alone. I will follow the footsteps. And I believe by following these footsteps, millions of my people in South Africa would follow these footsteps to see the light. Now, before we conclude, I want to also introduce you to another priest who was on his way. He was on a mission, sent on a mission by an archbishop. And on his way, he ends up getting stranded. So he goes to a church. And ends up at a mosque, and now he's relaying this story. This is a very interesting story, also by another priest in his congregation, talking about the brotherhood and the love and his wonderful experience sleeping in a masjid, a mosque. It's simple. You go anywhere, they tell you Al Muslim, Akul Muslim. Anywhere you go to, they will tell you a Muslim is the brother of a Muslim. I have shared with you here a terrible thing. I hate sharing it. I was sent by the archbishop somewhere and I got stranded on the way. I went to a church to go and tell them that they should, I, I want to spend the night there. I heard the pastor and the wife arguing inside. I told them, I said, look, I will not sleep in your house. I want to sleep in the church. Sir, they didn't allow me. I left that place and walked to a mosque. I, the only thing I said is assalamu alaikum. And he looked at me, he said, Mahala. He said, Lafia. I said, Nima Tafini. He said, Bismillah, Bismillah, Bismillah. He said, I should I should sit. Bismillah. So he told me he was he was eating his garagaro. He said, Mahalan, Bismillah, get out of the house. Sir, we finished. He said, Mahalan, he said, Masallah, I didn't have to go. He said, I didn't have to go. Sir, I slept in the mosque. In the morning, 
before the early morning prayers before he knows that it is not i only say salamu alaikum i quickly step out sir is it with that kind of christianity we will, is that, are you are you thinking we can we can dismantle that force our self-centered self-seeking self-glorifying christianity a christianity that only thinks about himself all right so there you have it you had a south african priest the 15 years takes shahada the declaration of faith la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah there's nothing worthy of worship except the one creator the creator of the heavens and the earth allah and muhammad is his messenger this would automatically include all the preceding messages that came jesus moses abraham noah you, you name it david solomon ishmael isaac all these were messengers that came with this exact same message worship one and only one god don't worship nothing in creation but the one god nothing else but him alone that's it and obey the messenger that was sent at your time at Jesus' time, he was the messenger. So you would say, La ilaha illallah, Isa, which was his name, Rasulullah. Jesus is the messenger. At Moses' time, Moses is the messenger. And this time, Muhammad is the messenger. He's saying that in front of his whole congregation. They accept Islam. And they're going by this book now, the Quran. This is the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. And the authentic prophetic statements, which we had the hadith. I like to gift this to you. You can go to the deanshow.com to see what led this man what teachings is he living by now this is all illustrated in this book i'll get it to you for free i believe this is uh we can do it for united states and canada and also if you have any questions don't be shy tell him eddie sent you call the number say i look i was watching the dean show and i had this question you got some misconception in your head you got some ideas about islam and you're like, okay, let me, before I go ahead and take the next step, I need these things cleared up. Go ahead, tell them I sent you, 1-800-662-ISLAM. Operators are standing by to go ahead and answer your questions, even help facilitate if you want to visit a masjid, a mosque, if you want to take your shahada, because you're thinking deeply, you're reflecting, what's the purpose of life? Why am I here? Why have I been created? Like every human being should be thinking and contemplating because death is a reality. And when it comes, you can't go back and retake the test. And when you're being tested, we're being tested now. And this is another sign like you've seen with these priests and pastors and whole congregations coming to this truth because it fits like a glove. And I guarantee you, if you can dig this main message worshiping the creator not his creation everything else god willing will fall in place but do your homework i need you to do your homework and ask just like if you need directions in life if you need to go somewhere and you need and you were stranded and you you needed to know which way is east or west and you would ask if you needed some money if you were hungry imagine you hadn't eaten for days and you're starving you'd be begging for food what about begging for guidance it's more important than any of these things. Begging for guidance, to really knowing what you're doing in this life. Who do you ask it from? From the creator of life. Say, guide me, guide me, guide me. Enough said. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. We've been told that uh, they're out to kill us all. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. We went to the streets to ask Americans about Islam. Here's what they said. Do you know anything about Islam? No. Do you know anything about Islam? No, sadly. Do you know anything about Islam? Uh, not really. Do you know anything about Islam? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you know what Islam means? Islam? Uh, no. We've been told that uh, they're out to kill us all. That's what you've been told, that Muslims are out to kill you all? Well, that's what they say on TV. Anything? I know it's in the Middle East, isn't it? Well, then you're going to have four wives. Brothers and sisters, as you can see, there are so many Americans who don't know about Islam. We need your help to change that. Help us to build the Dean Center, the first mega dawah center in America. Click the donate right now. May God Almighty Allah reward all of you.